With the purlins now on the roof, it's time for us to wrap the house in building paper and fasten the cavity battens. We're going to be looking at that today. So as you can see, we've already made a bit of a start, but let me just go over some of the materials that we're actually using for this part of the build. The building wrap that we're using is CoverTech 407 from Thermocraft. Now, if you had a timber frame, you would actually go around attaching the building wrap and stapling it into place. Because you can't put staples into a steel frame, there are a few other options. What you can do is use a glue or something like a double-sided tape, which works really well. But to make things really simple, we've actually been using magnets. So these are magnets that we've got just from magnets.co.nz. And what they do is they allow us to fasten the building wrap in place and then what we're doing is we're actually using the cavity battens over the top to actually fix it to the structure. So in a way, we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. The cavity bats that we're using are 20 mil polypropylene cavity battens. You certainly can use timber cavity battens in this case, but we've chosen to use polypropylene mainly because of the weight. Cavity battens are really important, especially in our case, because in addition to helping to keep the house watertight by creating a cavity between the weatherboards and the frame, what they're also doing is providing a thermal break and additional insulation into the house. The screws that we're using for this job are very similar to the ones that we actually used on the roofing purlins. Again, these here are class four Wingtech screws from Fortress Fasteners. Now, what these are designed to do is self-tap, so they'll actually self-drill into the steel. These little wings here create a pilot hole so that the threads don't actually bite into the polypropylene of the cavity batten. Then what happens is the wings actually break off when they hit the steel. The threads bite down into the steel and it secures in. For this particular task, we're using 45 mil screws. Now remember, because of the self-tapping head and the wingtips, what actually happens is you lose the first 15 mil in length. So from that point on, what you wanna do is you wanna calculate the width of your cavity batten, your building paper, and then the number of threads that need to go into steel, which is at least three. So that's just an indication when you're trying to figure out what size screws you need for this particular task. Okay, so with all that said and done, it's time for us to get stuck in and get our tiny house wrapped up. Uh, right this side. What I like about this is this, it's better than paper in the respect that say it rained right now and the paper got some dampness. The paper does shed, uh, but at the same time it will absorb some moisture. Going through those wet dry cycles, it gets weak and then the wind blows and it rips and tears. So this is this is really strong and this is I find this so waterproof that I use this to cover my firewood at home. It makes actually a temporary tarpaulin, it's 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 that good. So um, in, in high wind zones, I'm really rating this stuff as far as using it for building paper. Your hand for the fear of light. So that's about it for the cavity battens and the building wrap, at least for this part of the build. Later on, we're gonna be taking a look at the roof. Remember, if you wanna find out more about any of the materials that we're using, you can always visit our website, livingbiginatinyhouse.com. 